Hi everyone, welcome back. It's a beautiful day here in Ohio and I've already been outside gardening and trying to control my landscaping a little bit and pruning things. But um, I wanted to go ahead and try to get the next quarantine distraction video up for you all today. This is day 10. And even though I didn't have time to actually get a video shot today in my studio, I am showing you something that I previously shot at school. I'm not really at school today, obviously. We're kind of locked out of school for a while. But um, this video is on how to repair a bisque fired piece that might have a crack in it. Um, this happens more with my student work than my personal work. Maybe they let something dry too quickly or maybe they attached a handle at the wrong point and they have like cracking where the handle attaches to the cup. Um, this is uh, kind of showing a product that I buy and I use in my classroom called Bisque Fix by Amico. Um, and it works about, I would say, 50 to 75% of the time. So it's worth it to me to help salvage student products. Um, in this video, uh, I did leave in a kind of a blooper. I don't normally do that. I normally edit them out, but I thought it was a little bit funny. So you'll see that as you're uh, watching it. Um, shoot me any questions if you, uh, you know, have any question about use of this or something else. If there's a kind of video that you want to see, I'm keeping a running list of things. Um, what are you doing during the quarantine time? I'm having a lot of family time prepping for online learning. Both my husband and I are teachers, so we're trying to prep. This is our spring break week, and we're trying to prep for next week when we, uh, you know, kind of come back with the kids and we're doing online learning. We've also been doing a lot of puzzles. Have you been doing Doing puzzles puzzles are like the big thing around here when we're all in the house so it's kind of fun so I hope that you're all uh, staying healthy stay safe and keep potting hey there um, uh, this video is for anyone who has ever had issues with fixing cracks when something comes out of the bisque fire sometimes you might just have a crack that wasn't there before or maybe it was there before, uh, but you would like to fix it. Um, as a high school ceramics teacher, I often have students who have a little bit of a craft issue. So this was a lovely picture, but when the handle dried, um, I believe that everything did not dry equally and evenly, and uh, as the handle was shrinking, it uh, pulled away and it caused a crack. Um, of course, cracks can happen too if someone puts a handle on when the handle and the pot are not the exact same moisture, it can cause a crack. Or in the case of this one, this was really sad. Uh, one of my girls made, it's a lovely teapot. It's, she made a teapot based on um, a, a video that I have. And she made a great little texture mat with hearts that she cut out and everything. But this is a hollow handle, but she forgot to put a vent hole, unfortunately. And the vent hole is there to help uh, eliminate any possible buildup of steam or water vapor and because it didn't have the vent hole unfortunately it just popped off it was just lying there in the kiln um, when it came out of the bisque fire but I do have uh, a solution that you can use to help remedy after something has been bisque fired to try to fill the crack and then you can glaze over it so the product is this Amico bisque fix uh, it is fairly pricey. Um, I buy it from my local supplier. Um, you can get it online. Uh, if you look in the uh, video description, I will link it. And uh, there's also my Google Doc that has links to the various products on Amazon that I use, tools, materials, stuff like that. And it should also be in my Amazon influencer storefront. But Bisque Fix is one of the nicest products I've found. There are various uh, manufacturers that make things similar to Bisque Fix, but I have to say I think that this works the most de dependably for me. So one of the tricks that I do when um, I use Bis Bisque Fix after I've opened it up is I will Okay, so one of the tricks that I do whenever I use this fix is after I've had it uh, opened and this uh, came with a foil cap on it, what I do is I place a little piece of plastic bag in between the lid and the container. Um, Bisque Fix does kind of dry up and it anchors it on, so this uh, little plastic barrier helps to make the lid removable. Um, especially my students are a little bit messy with it sometimes and I hate it when it really gets um, stuck on there. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so I wanna show the application process now. You can see when the bisque fix comes, it's usually a little watery on top, so I'm taking a paintbrush. Oh, and by the way, this is an old paintbrush. I usually dedicate a paintbrush entirely to bisque fix. I'm not gonna use it with clay. I'm not gonna use it with glaze. Um, it ends up by making the brush uh, kinda nasty because it's hard to clean it out all the way. So I'm gonna mix that up. And you can see it should look runny on the on the edge of pasty, but it is definitely, it's got a, a runny quality to it. It will dry uh, periodically as you're using it. And if you can catch it before it dries out too much, you can always add a little bit more water to it to get it back to the workable consistency. Okay, so for this crack on this one, I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to try to shove it in as best as I can. Okay. Now I am going to be trying to clean off the excess. So I have a little damp sponge on hand and then I'm just going to just kind of take this around trying not to wipe it out of the crack but trying to wipe it off the surrounding area. Sometimes it might take me a couple of applications like I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes and I'll come back. The reason that I try to wipe off the excess is uh, it will show up when you glaze over it if you have a lot of excess. So I try to uh, get that off of there so it's the least noticeable as possible. So I put that in that crack. There we go. And now this is the big one. The thing about this one, because I have to put it on in two areas, I have to work kind of quickly and it is going to start to dry. So I'm first of all going to add a little water to both surfaces. That'll help to slow down the drying. Now I'm just gonna goop it on pretty heavily and I'm gonna allow it to kind of come out. So I'm gonna goop, goop, goop. And then, ah, okay. Now I'm gonna put those together Try to line them up, really holding them in place. And while I'm holding them in place, I'm going to go ahead and try to wipe off some of the extra. need a few minutes to dry and then I'll come back and I'll try to add a little bit more. And here I'm just trying to add a little bit more over that transition because it is kind of a, a noticeable little transition there. So I'm trying to soften that so it's not so noticeable. And then again, I'm gonna try to wipe off the excess. Now, if it has started to dry, you can always use something a little bit more abrasive. So like this is a, a little abrasive pad. I, ha I think I have these listed on Amazon too. I am not a person who likes to um, sand. I know that uh, you will see some people that sand their greenware or even their bisque. I don't do that. I don't like to do anything that's going to create dust. So getting that cleaned up. Now this might be obvious, but I would definitely not pick this up by the handle. Uh, until after it's been, I would say, glaze fired. I probably wouldn't even hold it by the handle after bisque. I would wait until the glaze fire because it will become a little bit more fully matured. So that one's cleaned off. That's ready for uh, going back into another bisque kiln. The um, key is you always have to bisque fire. I've tried to do it in a pinch at the end of the semester when we don't have time to bisque fire 
and if you glaze over it without it bisque firing, I have found that the glaze just pops off. So it needs to be fully matured, I think, in a bisque firing. And lastly, I'll check this one. I'll get some of that off the table there. Stick that on. There we go. And then I do want to get it off of any surfaces that it might have fallen on before it fully dries because it's a bear to get off a little bit. And students, make sure that you're washing out your paintbrush if you are using it. And put the little plastic back on. So that's my favorite tip on using bisque fix to help fix something that's cracked or broken um, after the bisque fire and you can put it on and refire it again.